Greetings. This is a volcano and earthquake watch for June 1 through to June 5. Strong geomagnetic disturbances have been recorded in the KP index as well as significant sunspot activity. I do believe there is a strong likelihood of a 7.5 earthquake during this watch. The KP index is showing continued amount of activity even after the back-to-back -back G2 class geomagnetic storms as recorded on the 28th and 29th of May. These were followed up by a G1 class geomagnetic storm the same day. This is indicative of three separate solar disturbances which seem to have been earth facing. We're now looking at the SEO composite, we get to see three separate solar reactions or solar disturbances that may have been the cause of the geomagnetic activity that we have been receiving on the KP index. We do get to see an initial reaction below in the southern hemisphere, then a simultaneous eruption on both hemispheres. We're now looking at the latest telemetry from ACE, we get to see solar wind speeds currently at 700 km a second after almost reaching 900 about 12 hours ago. During the same time frame, the density has decreased quite significantly. It's also worth noting that the BZ or BZ component is widely fluctuating up and down quite rapidly. Solar activities have picked up quite dramatically over the last 48 hours or so due to the emergence of new active region 11226. This has been reflected on the GOES X-ray flux monitor. Now looking at the solar terrestrial activity report via Solon.info, we get to see three numbered coronal hole regions on the solar corona at this present time. Solar wind speeds reached 900 km a second yesterday. This was due to CH451 affecting the Earth's magnetic field. A fairly significant burst of solar winds. I do expect that there is a possibility of some earthquake potential in this coronal hole region in the coming days. But the main area of focus is CH452. I do feel that there is a much larger earthquake potential, possibly 7.5, embedded within this coronal hole above. Now looking at the animated coronal hole map, CH451 is centered at 7 to 11 degrees north latitude. And there may be a significant earthquake in the coming days in and around these latitudes. However, with high solar winds, there more than likely be a swarm of smaller events in and around this area. I do feel that it was more than likely a fairly powerful seismic correction due, mainly due to a fairly quiet period during May in terms of seismic activities. I do feel that Coronal Hole 452 may present a significant risk of a fairly powerful earthquake. I'm now going to be targeting some areas that are sitting 7 to 11 degrees north latitude that may be in play of a significant earthquake over the next day or two. The main region would be in and around Philippines, Sanmar, Philippines, stretching down towards Mindanao, Philippines, could be in play of a significant earthquake, possibly around 6 in magnitude. Also on the opposite end, the Nicomar Islands could also be in play. We're now looking at this coronal hole region with the 193 angstrom in the northern hemisphere, and it will be earth facing in a few days time. Now using the Hinode XRT or the Hinaday XRT with solar monitor, we get to see a significant coronal hole region above, and I've calculated it at around 36 to 44 degrees north latitude. The regions of Greece and Turkey have been significantly active over the last week or so, with significant swarms occurring. I do feel there is a possibility that these regions may be affected again, and even the regions of Italy could also be affected. So the regions of Europe could be in play for a significant event during this watch. My second area of concern will be the top portion of the New Madrid fault line. There have been some interesting photos floating around on the internet showing some rainbow cloud formations which could be indicative of some radiation released from the Earth which could be an indication of a potentially large seismic event in the region. And my final area of watch for the Northern Hemisphere will be the region of Southern Zhejiang, China. Now looking at the Southern Hemisphere with the 193 angstrom and solar monitor, we get to see a fissure that's opened up deep down the southern hemisphere which is centered at about 30 degrees south latitude. The most likely region that may be affected by a 5.7 to 6.0 earthquake in the southern hemisphere during this watch may be the regions of Coquimbo, Chile or the region of San Juan, Argentina. Now looking at the outgoing long wave radiation data anomaly, this is showing possible areas on the globe that could be releasing radon radiation which could also be an early indicator of a fairly large seismic event. The main area on this 5 day moving average is showing at around Guam and Mariana Islands region stretching down towards Philippines. The second area of concern would be in and around South Africa and the third area of concern for those people in America is around the top portions of the New Madrid fault line. We're now going to be looking at some ionospheric anomalies that are situated in and around the equator region and above. The main area of focus that I've been watching over the last few days are the regions in and around the Andaman Islands and the Nicobar Islands and also stretching up towards Panama and Guatemala and Honduras. These are the main regions. There's also a significant amount of activity 
in and around Taiwan and also the Philippines. We're now looking at the Lasco C2, we get to see a fairly powerful coronal mass ejection as released on the 29th of May. There is a significant planetary alignment that falls on June the 2nd and I will leave the link in the description box and as a video response for anyone who's interested. And that's my earthquake watch for today for May 30, 2011. Annotations will be added during and at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.